How's it going? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make this cement asphalt material here. For this render right here, you can download the scene file in the description for a dollar. Everybody on Patreon, you'll be getting that for free. That being said, on the Patreon, I just released a scratches material. So you can go and grab that on the Patreon right now, as well as this pack of 10 iridescent shaders. That's available on Patreon as well. If you don't know about the Patreon, we have exclusive tutorials. I talk about my client work and you get weekly project files from a bunch of my projects and things and ideas and studies. So if you want to go and check out the Patreon, you can do that in the description. Uh, but let's go ahead and make this material. <clears throat> All right, so we have an empty file here. You can just throw in whatever um, object you want. I like the cone just for this. When I was designing the scene that's in the, uh, in the original project file, I was just playing with the triangle. And when I'm designing my materials, it's always good to design it on the object that you're going to be using it for. At least I've found that to uh, be really beneficial, just so you can get that perfect look that you're going for. So I'm just gonna bevel this guy really quickly. Shade smooth, and let's hop on over to the shading tab. So we have this guy right here. Let's go ahead, make it new. Let's get a color ramp and attach this color ramp here to the base color of our material. I'm gonna close this window here to give us more space. Now we have our object showing right here. Let's go ahead and get a Musgrave texture. Now we're going to use this Musgrave. This is one of the most useful nodes I use right now for service imperfections and things like that. Now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, hit Control-T, you get this texture set up with a mapping node and a texture coordinate and use the object coordinate. That's so that when you apply this material to other things, it's still going to be um, even evenly distributed. Now let's attach this Musgrave to the color ramp. Now that's going to, you're going to see this here. So what we're gonna do is take the dimension, we'll take the dimension down to zero, the detail up, and we're gonna get this nice thing. Now we can start coloring. Um, cement is very light colored, so we're gonna take this white, and it's, but it's not a pure white, so let's take the white down to right here and take this black portion and bring it pretty far up to something around there. So we're already getting some pretty good cement looking material here. Let's get a bump node here and get, the, get this to start, start playing with how it's looking. So let's get this Musgrave texture, plug it right here into the height. And now we're going to get some bumping going on. It's going to be a little bit too harsh. So we're going to bring the strength down a little bit. You can start seeing how it works. Um, but we're getting some bumping, so that's good. Now, this is nice. Actually, you can sort of stop here if you like this as a cement material, but we want to add some other details in this. So we're going to get in a noise texture. So type in noise texture. So the reason why I want to use a noise texture here is because this is really flat and I want to have some more deeper dents inside the material. So I'm just going to plug this factor into the color ramp so we can see what's happening. So we can just design this guy. Now for the noise texture, I'm going to give the scale, we're going to put the scale at six here. I'm going to put my detail at 16, gives us some detail. Now the most important thing is my distortion, put it at four, and this is what we're going for here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine these two together with a mix RGB. Mix RGB allows you to mix two um, textures together here, and then we'll just plug this color mix into the color ramp. So make sure that these two are plugged into the mix RGB and the mix RGB is plugged into this color ramp and this bump node. And then we'll plug this right here. And we'll plug the normal back into the normal. So you can see it's not really working if you wanna see how the uh, noise texture works. This is what we're seeing here with noise, and this is what we're seeing here with just the moose grave, and you can combine them like this. The problem is it's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna get a color ramp, get a color ramp right here to sort of squash and flatten some areas on the thing. So we're gonna go completely to the noise texture so we can see what's happening and we're gonna bring the white portion in. So this is what I want. This is why I'm using the noise texture, just to get some dents, some indents in the uh, in the cement, just like that. Now, all right, so now what I wanna do is change it from mix to difference. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow them to mix very nicely here um, in the factor. So just like this, and then we'll bring this in a little bit. So now we, you can see we have some nice scratches, some nice dents in our material. The last thing I'm gonna do is make the cracks. So we're gonna add in a Voronoi texture here. 
get a Voronoi, plug this Voronoi texture into a new bump node. So duplicate the bump node, add the new bump node into the normal of this bump, and give the distance here into the height. And we'll hit Control T to add a new texture setup with the object coordinate enabled. So a lot of you may remember in the old Blender, Blender 2.8, or two, in parts of Blender 2.8, you had the crackle. And now you can't see crackle, but to get crackled, keep it at the default settings and just go to distance to edge right here and crackle is back. So now we have the crackle node. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a color ramp right here, plug it right there. And we just wanna get these crack lines. So just like this, bring in that color ramp. So we get this. Now we're gonna get, now we're getting some of those cracks, but we need to add some detail inside of that. And that's here on the vector line. So we'll get a noise texture right here. And this vector line is gonna add us, let us mess with what's happening over here. So we'll add the detail in and, we'll, and keep the scale where it's at. Now, right now it's not cracks anymore. They look like worm lines. What we wanna do is add a mix RGB, plug it right there. And then we'll take the object coordinate and put it in a plug into color two. And the reason we're doing that is when you bring the slider over, it's essentially back to where we started before we added this noise texture. And if you bring the slider over here, it's like before we added the mix RGB where the noise was completely affecting. So with this, so this node pretty much allows us to just use some of the noise. So what we'll do is bring this factor in to add some detail on those cracks. And then on the bump node, bring up the strength just like this. And then I'm gonna bring up the scale cause I want it, to, I'm gonna bring down the scale cause I just want it to be cracking some of it. And then if you don't like how big the cracks are, you can just bring this in and tighten up those cracks. And you now have a nice cracked cement material. And then you can check it out. It works just fine in cycles. Of course, in cycles, it looks a little bit too brighter. Look, looks a little bit too bright. I would actually bring in um, some dark in that stuff. So you can actually, um, between the different lighting setups and different render engines, you'll have to play with the uh, the color. You know, it, it's all about it's all about just how you're using the shader in different circumstances. So this is how it looks in cycles. Pretty photo real. It's awesome. So yeah, that's the that's the cement shader. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. And thanks for watching.